It is a cold morning. I finally met up with Kyle from Out of Spec Motoring and Timon, his photographer. Who Timon's gonna be riding the bike. I don't know if you can see the bike from here. It's right over there. I'm gonna be riding in my car with the heat on. Timon's gonna be riding the bike all the way through Montana. That's what this video is going to be about. Uh, we're gonna be camping, we're gonna be charging at camping grounds. Uh, we're not gonna hit any superchargers. Hopefully this thing can make it. If not, um, I guess we're gonna have to figure something out. We're setting everything up, we're just waking up. They didn't pull in here till about, it was like midnight or something. Uh, I went to bed, it was beautiful here. It is just a field pretty much. Sorry, the sun's back there, kind of washed it out. But this is a nice little campground. Heated showers in there, wonderful. It was great to just be set up here. Cooked dinner last night, kind of went a little overboard with it. Charging everything up to 100% and taking off. And got the drone in the sky, getting some cool shots in this morning and the rest of it's going to be driving. This first trek is going to be, it's 140 miles, so yes, this car can do it, but with this tent on top, my watt hour per mile, a lot of you have asked, my watt hour per mile is almost 500. Almost 500, keep that in mind. So I'm basically cutting my range in half. So I should be able to make it because we're going to be going like 35, 40 miles an hour. But I don't know about the elevation where we're going because we're in North Dakota right now. We're going to be heading to Montana and we're going to be the rest of the trip is going to be in Montana for this video. After this video, stay tuned. Subscribe to my channel because when we get to Glacier National Park, I'm flying my wife out there. This is we're going to get all the way. We're going to get to Glacier on Friday. So this is a week long trip on Friday. I'm done with these guys if I can make it all the way. And then her and I are heading all the way down Utah, Arizona, two weeks. That's gonna be broken up into a few videos, a bunch of videos, but this one here is all about electric travel where there's no charging, where there's not an infrastructure. Can it be done? We got two bikes, we got a Tesla, and we got a gas support vehicle. You kinda of have to. So, let's see what we can do. All right, so we're almost packed up. We're ready to go. This is Kyle from Out of Spec Motoring and Timon, who's gonna be riding the bike. He's gonna be the one that's cold. But <laughs> this is a zero motorcycle. And could you explain about a zero motorcycle? Yeah, so this is the Zero DSR Black Forest, which is essentially their dual sport with all the power. So it's the fast dual sport with the night, well, I keep wanting to call it nightshade. The Black Forest adds these little crash bars. You get the uh, bags on the back. You get a nice uh, windshield. So the really nicely kitted out bike. We've had these specially adapted with Continental knobby tires as well. We expect uh, at least later on in this excursion to hit some dirt. We have two of them, so Timon and I will both be riding. Unfortunately, I have to drive the van most of the way, but we'll switch on and off. When we get some good trails, I'll pull the other one out of the van. The goal for this particular bike though, which is a 2021, uh, again, Zero DSR Black Forest, is to go across the entire state of Montana, away from public charging infrastructure. Uh, you know, no Tesla chargers, no J1772s, nothing like this. Just campgrounds and knocking on people's door. The goal is to go on an adventure with an electric adventure bike. So this bike does not get put back in the van until it touches Idaho. We're in North Dakota right now. So that's the goal. We'll see if it's possible. So you might be asking yourself, why are we doing this? Really, this is just to see if you can do some adventure traveling. Uh, really, it's about the motorcycle to see if we can actually do that. I'm just tagging along to have some fun. Can you go off grid? Can you take the, um, a dirt bike? It's kind of a dirt bike, but it's a motorcycle. Uh, can you take that across where there's no charging, RV charging, finding charging? You know, this is gonna stay off of the Tesla network as long as I can, really. Uh, through Montana. Then when I pick my wife up, obviously we're just gonna be on on the Tesla network. But you know, it's this is just something that most people don't do, and I think it's I think it's a good exercise to see what you can do. You know, so much of so many of us are used to just charging at home, and that's it. Or maybe on a trip you go see your parents or something, and you plug in at a supercharger or two, and then that's it. But you can do a lot more with a Tesla, and that's that's the whole point of this. This is going to be kind of a long video. This is going to be the whole week. 
with the motorcycle, with camping, and all the problems that we run into, if we run into any problems. It could be perfect. It, I could run completely out of battery and they have to tow me. We don't know. I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm already enjoying my time. This is just gonna be so much fun. It doesn't look like much now, but just wait. So Kyle spotted this area, there's a rest area here, and he saw that these posts were sticking out of the ground. There's no meter on this, but let's see if this works. 50 amp breakers off, we're gonna pop it up, see what happens, plug in. Well, it was worth a shot, no power. Makes sense because the uh, meters aren't on, but well, might as well try it. Back to 40 miles an hour. <laughs> Maybe slower, because now we've detoured over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll find a place, I'm confident. There's enough small towns. Uh, so many RVs come out here to Montana. We'll, we'll find some and we'll add them to plug share as we find them. So as we were leaving, Kyle spotted a NEMA 1450 outlet right over there. We're still at the same spot. We came over to this area. It's actually the Highway Patrol or the uh, Montana State Patrol. Uh, Kyle found a NEMA 1450 outlet on the side of the building and uh, we plugged the bike in because the bike has a really small battery. With the bike plugged in we can go a little bit faster than five, um, we can go a little bit faster than 40 miles an hour, make it to our destination a little quicker. Right now we've actually increased range because we are going 40 miles an hour. It's actually doing our car really well. Uh, we're at 83 percent and going 40 miles an hour it, it suspects us getting to our destination at 42. With this rooftop tent this thing usually cuts about depending on wind and elevation it cuts 20 to 25 percent of my range right around 20 percent so um doing that's doing 70 75 miles an hour i think 50 will be right on target it'll be like nothing's there i'm not sure if i showed you how high we actually are into montana that is the canadian border so we're pretty high up above Montana closest supercharger way down there I'm gonna get even farther from the next one and even farther from all the rest it's crazy but the landscape is starting to turn very beautiful now Fort Peck Dam Lake. It is a damn lake. I'll give them that. That's about all there is. So we had to pull off. The Timon's bike is down to 0%. So we found a place to plug in one or to 220. It's all about the adventure. Right? So we are at Fort Peck and there's a service station here that allowed us to plug the zero bike into because the, the bike is at zero. That's weird, zero bike. Anyway, they told us about a campground around the lake right around here. We're gonna take the Model Y over there, plug it in, and then we'll let the, see if there's any charging. And then we'll come back and get the bike to see if we can plug it in. We're going to the campground. So this is our campground for tonight. We got my car plugged in. Kyle's tent is right over here. They're gonna be sleeping on the ground. Sorry. <laughs> I'm up in the high rise apartment. <laughs> so <laughs> obviously we don't have to plug the van in because that is a gas van, but there we're gonna take this other bike out. This is fully charged. And as this once this bike is fully charged over here, we're gonna head some trails. The Army Corps of en Engineer, the park ranger here. He told us to head out over here and there's some really cool trails. You could probably see them, probably can't see them, but there's some really cool trails right over there. And that's where we're gonna go play, have some fun, drain the batteries, drive all the way back here and plug back in. 
That is the life of an electric car owner or electric bike owner. valuable lesson when camping. When you go to bed and you use your phone as the key, make sure you have enough juice or bring your charging cable up into the tent with you, even if you're tired. I didn't. I didn't bring the cable with me to charge said phone. My phone died over the night and my wallet with my key card was inside the car. Well, when you do that, you can't get inside the car. Well, in the Tesla anyway. Note to self, Make sure you charge your phone up. It wasn't too bad because Kyle just woke up. I've been up for an hour. I've been walking around, checking out this beautiful scenery. I just waited till they got up, walked around. It's, it's brisk, it's cold. I don't know what time it is, but I don't know. I do know what time it is now. 7.30, because I was in the car for a little bit. Sun's coming out, warming up a little bit, warming up my jacket. We only went 100 miles yesterday. We're gonna try to get 200 miles down the road today. It's possible for me. The bike only goes like 100 miles or so. The first stop is about 90 miles so we can kind of go a little fast on the bike and get to a campground like this one, charge up, go to another campground and that's where we're going to spend the night. 200 miles away roughly give or take. Now uh, I charged my car to 95% last night. Now uh, I just put it up to 100%. It's going to take an hour or so. Once they get up and moving I think we're going to start off early today. Today's going to be a lot like yesterday. A lot like yesterday. Hopefully we can go more than 40 miles an hour. Either way, I'm enjoying all this. It's beautiful weather. Really no wind down here because we're down and the, the lake is up higher um, for the dam over there. And so this is down below. Really no wind last night. Obviously a raccoon was trying to get in my car last night or something. It looked like a raccoon anyway. This is really cool because there's water up here that they pull, since this is, um, this is Montana, it gets really cold, everything ice is over. They actually pull from the bottom of the lake over there to suck the water into through the dam to create power to go into here. Really cool, we got to learn a lot from the park ranger and the Army Corps of Engineer guy that was here. And he did say this isn't really for energy, it's more for flood control, that's their main priority. Because uh, the water comes down from the mountains and they need to they need to figure it out. They need to, they need to stop it from you know rushing down. So that's what this is mainly for. And of course, they use it to create energy, and uh, which is good, renewable energy. That reservoir over there is basically like a battery pack. They can more energy they need, the more water they flow through. So it's pretty cool. It's a natural battery. These right here, these buildings here, those are shutoffs. There's four ports that pull water in. Uh, and those are, if they need to electronically shut off the water for any reason, they can actually just pull, the, these things just drop down at, like gates. They've never had to use them, which I guess is good. This right here is the spillway to release a bunch of water. They will uh, open this up. We just stopped to take a quick look around. This is beautiful out here.
after lunch. We stopped in Jordan, the town of Jordan, for lunch. Charged up the car and the bike. Added some miles. We got 175 miles to go. And we only have another 100 mile stretch, I think, or no, oh, it's 70 mile stretch. So I got plenty. We're gonna be going a little faster because the bike is fully charged and that can go faster. So we ate at this small little diner. It, Kyle liked it though. So, back on the road. Stopped at this really nice RV park. Topped off the bike. Put some very juice in here. here. You're very happy here? Very happy here. Yeah, if I ever go missing, <laughs> this is where I'll be. They'll say I mean, that about the next time. Not time. I might end up here. It's a good spot to charge up. And you can camp if you want to. So we're booking it to where we're going to be camping for the night. And I hope that stuff stays away. Good morning, day three with Auto Spec Motoring. Packing up camp and you know what, let me face this way so you can see the mountains. That's where we're gonna be going. That's gonna be really cool. Oh, we're gonna go even farther than those. So this morning we're loading up camp. It's freezing out here. What is the temperature? There's no way it's 43 degrees. I wanna mention something to your audience. We went to a campground here looking for plugs yesterday by the airport Yeah. that was free and was 10 times nicer than this and had bathrooms. Here, yeah. it's $43 yeah. and they have no facilities well, of any kind. They have a bathroom, but it says closed due to COVID. Oh, really? But this state's open. So this town's heard of COVID in Montana. Apparently. But no other town. Yeah, exactly. That makes sense, okay. to this cool little RV park here. I think it's Conestoga Park, I think is what it's called, or RV park. And uh, we're just charging up the car and the bike. The bike's at 60%. They have some nice showers in there, so I'm gonna jump in the shower uh, as soon as time is done. We got some time to kill. So <laughs> that's part of what this is, is really killing some time um, while the car's charging, going to eat, doing, hanging out, downloading footage, things like that. So you can travel if you want to doing this, not totally recommended, but if you like adventure, that's what this is all about. And if you like stuff like that, then you definitely have to come up to one of these parks. I mean, there's charging everywhere. You just gotta find it. You don't need a ton of adapters too, because I really just have the NEMA 1450, and that's what most of these parks, that's what most of these things are, right over here. Um, there are some 30 amps and Kyle does have a, a an adapter for that that he's let me use, but um, 
that goes really slow. So it's better to have a NEMA 1450 like you do have it at your house. And just enjoy this beautiful sky. Look at this sky. Not this guy, but look at the sky. It's a cool little park though. Hopefully the, uh, hopefully the next one we go to to spend the night is like this too. I'm all cleaned up. Got a nice shower, nice hot showers here. Check out Charge Point wherever you're, if you're coming through Montana, this is a great place. Uh, Kyle's putting all the Charge Point uh, stops here. But I got a nice shower. We're heading out to Helena. Helena has a supercharger. I'm gonna stop there at the supercharger. Kyle and Timon are gonna go to Starbucks. They have a, a plug for them. Thank you. There's nice people here. Let us use the showers and charge the car. We gave them some money, of course, and now we're back on the road. I'm gonna charge it until the car starts tapering because I don't need a whole lot because we're the from the super, from that supercharger, our campground is only 50 miles away, and then I'm gonna charge overnight anyway. So, um, yeah, it's good to see a supercharger again. What a sight, a sight for sore eyes. 17%, we're gonna plug in V3, let's get pumping. In no time, we're up to 66%. That's all I need because I'm gonna charge at the campground tonight. They're, they plugged in the motorcycle, they came back over here while I ran inside to get some stuff in the grocery store here. And we're gonna go to dinner now. Check out her. She loves her job. So good morning, day four I think? Day four with out of spec crew. Drew, he showed up today or this morning or late last night and he's gonna be riding the other motorcycle and uh, it's gonna be a good day today. It's, it's pretty warm-ish. I think it's like 40 degrees right now or upper 30s right now. It's early, it's like 7.30 and uh, we're gonna get cleaned up, charge the bikes up and get ready to go. But this should be really fun. Drew who showed up today, he's the one who makes these Martian wheels. I know a lot of people ask me what wheels I have on my Model Y and they are Martian wheels. These are 18 inch wheels. They're the only 18 inch wheels that I am aware of that fit over the performance brakes on a Model 3 and a Model Y. And I think they look really nice. They kind of look like the uh, Roadster wheels, but they're really light, very lightweight, and you can get them in different widths and up to 20s. You can get 19, so if you want to replace your 19 inch stock wheels, Get some 19s that look good. You can get different colors. I powder coated mine black, but I think they look amazing. And they're super light compared to the stock. I charged my car to 97-ish percent, and then I'm just topping it off to 100% this morning, slowly on the 30 amp plug, just so it warms up and it's not using so much power to get going. Pretty comfortable. Like I said, it didn't really get too cold. And just gotta put everything away. Push everything to the end, bring my clothes in, and uh, put the tent down. Get some of this moisture off though. The map, because we're camping somewhere right around here, we're gonna head up to Glacier. And you can see through those trees, that's kind of where we're going. We're all set, ready to go. Drew's in front of me with the white helmet. Timon's alongside right now, but I'm gonna be following behind both of them. And we're going to be going slow to the first stop. Uh, well, I think the first stop is a gas station. But the first charging stop, we're going to have to go slow to conserve energy. I'm at 100%, so I'm still going to go slow anyway, be, just because I need to conserve energy as well. My The bikes have a lot smaller battery, and it's going to be harder to find charging. So they stop for an hour at a time. I don't really gain that much. Uh, so after like three stops, I'm pretty much dead, so it's gonna be fun. We don't know there's charging where we're going, so it's a it's a big hunt. Now again, this is, if you're just driving across Montana, you can get all the way out of Montana, not a big deal, but uh, we're gonna head up to Glacier because why not? It's a beautiful place. What's the point of an adventure without seeing beautiful places? And beautiful faces.
So at this point in the day, we've been looking for charging. We've been stopping off different places and we're pretty low. So I looked on the Tesla and it showed a destination charger not far at this pause resort. So we figured, great, if there's gonna be a small resort, we can plug in there. Destination charger, There's we have adapters for that stuff, plus my car just takes a destination charger. We got there, we, we finally pull into the resort. So we had to stop at this pause resort. It showed a Tesla charger here and there was not. This is a beautiful resort. We stopped and plugged in. They, they graciously allowed us to come back to the the storage building back here, this is where they fix everything. And we were able to find three NEMA 1450 outlets. We show up, we pull up to the front there. One bike had 1%, the other bike had 2%. But we were greeted there and we were told to leave. We couldn't charge, they didn't have them set up. You know, Kyle took over, started talking to him and asking, hey, let's just rent a room and we'd be on our way or something like that, or we'd just pay for the electricity. And that's kind of what we did when we went different places. Uh, someone would, it was, there'd be some pushback on some places and we would just say, hey, can we just, can we just pay for the electricity that we use? Here, it wasn't really that. They had to radio and get some people to escort us back to very back of the resort. Uh, those guys were really cool back there. Up front, they didn't want us to charge. They wanted us to charge one bike, really, so we can get the heck out of there. Um, because this is a resort that actors go to, celebrities, um, very expensive. We did look it up and I think the cheapest room was like $1,600 a night and it's a three night minimum. Uh, but this place had, I think it was like 370,000 acres. I mean, they, they owned a mountain, more than a mountain. It, they, you can do anything you want there. I mean, you could probably hunt people if you wanted to. We had an hour to kill, so we, so we acted like we uh, had, a, had a place there. So we walked into where they served food and we had lunch there. It's a beautiful lunch, sitting outside, you can see the mountains. Uh, one of the greatest meals we had during the whole trip. Up to 77%. Swing over the other side of the shop to the guys. This is a great spot, great stay. At first it was a little hesitant. They did not want to do anything. We The bikes were completely empty, so it was like you can charge up one, but once we get back here to the maintenance guys, they're super awesome. And uh, this is a beautiful resort. Look up the Paws Resort in Bonner, Montana. It's nice. And then from that point, we just headed towards Glacier National Park. So the car was charging, this van pulled up, they offered me candy, and, <laughs> <laughs> and we had a beautiful time in Glacier. Kyle's been there before, he took us to some different places, but Glacier was not open completely. Uh, there was, I think, 15 miles of Glacier that was open. They were still clearing from an avalanche, they were clearing snow from an avalanche, so we weren't able to see everything. But what we saw was super beautiful, and in fact, I actually, uh, if you saw my last video, I actually flew my wife out because I left those guys. They continued on to all the way across Montana. But I, I flew my wife out to Glacier and I spent the time with her and then we spent two weeks on this whole trip. And uh, they're gonna have a full detailed video on everything, the charging, what you can do and everything like that. But I learned a lot. I learned a lot on this trip. I, I learned that you can, you shouldn't be too worried about charging. There's charging everywhere, as long as you have the time, the adapters, and the ability to look for it. You gotta find out what you're looking for. Uh, you do need a couple adapters. If you're, gonna do, if you're gonna be going off of the Tesla network, away from the Tesla network, that was so much fun, just traveling from the beginning, um, not knowing where we were going, really. We had, no, we had a, an idea where we were going, but we didn't know where we were camping, where we were charging, where we were eating, and there was, so there was no plan to it. The only plan was to get to Glacier, and then they moved on to Idaho to make it all the way across Montana on electric power without a charging infrastructure. Uh, so it did cost us some money. It did cost some money, so if you're gonna be doing this, take cash with you because I burnt through a lot of cash going through uh, giving $20, $10 for, uh, for charging. So yes, it did cost a lot of money. Uh, 
compared to what we, how much energy we used, we did educate a lot of people. And would I do it again? I think I would. I think it'd be fun. You know, we had no destination really, and it, it was a lot of fun that way. Uh, maybe a little bit more planning next time and maybe stopping off. Not so much getting across the country, but stopping off and hitting trails different places instead of just trying to make it across the state or not even a whole across the state, maybe just do a, a section. You know, hey Kyle, why don't you come down and uh, there's a Georgia Traverse, we should do that. Get the Zero motorcycles, maybe, maybe a, a Suron, those go about the same. I learned live life to the fullest, have fun, just be spontaneous and hit the trails. Get out there and have some fun. It's hard to travel overseas. There's a lot to see in the United States and I'm sure there's a lot to see in your country wherever you're watching this from. As always, stay awesome, stay positive, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.